Question, what is the age requirement when applying for a learner license in Texas? Option number one, the minimum age you must be in order to apply for a permit in Texas is 15. Option number two, the minimum age you must be in order to apply for a permit in Texas is 18. Option number three, the minimum age you must be in order to apply for a permit in Texas is 21. Option number four, the minimum age you must be in order to apply for a permit in Texas is 22. The answer is option number one, the minimum age you must be in order to apply for a permit in Texas is 15. Note, a learner license, also known as an instruction permit, allows a student driver to legally practice driving when accompanied by a licensed driver. The licensed driver must be at least 21 years of age, with at least one year of driving experience, must occupy the seat beside the driver, and cannot be intoxicated, asleep, or engaging in any activity that prevents observation and response to the actions of the driver. A learner license will indicate learner license on the front of the card and expire on the minor's 18th birthday. A person applying for a learner license must number 1. Be at least 15, but no more than 18 years of age. Number 2. Complete the classroom portion of a driver education course, vision exam, and knowledge exam. Number 3. Meet all other requirements for a first-time driver license original applicant. Question, if a tire blows out, you should? Option number 1. Keep your vehicle go straight. Option number 2. Shift gears. Option number 3. Speed up. Option number 4. Break hard. The answer is option number one, keep your vehicle go straight. Note, flat tire or blowout. If you have a flat tire or a blowout, do not hit the brakes suddenly and hard. Take your foot off the gas pedal and gently apply the brakes. Steer straight ahead to a stop. Question, what does this sign mean? Option number one, a steep downgrade is ahead. Option number two, a gravel road is ahead. Option number three, a winding road is ahead. Option number four, the road ahead is slippery when wet. The answer is option number four, the road ahead is slippery when wet. Note, slow down on wet road. Do not suddenly turn, speed up, or stop. Question, in which gear should you drive when going down a steep hill? Option number one, shift into neutral. Option number two, shift into a higher gear. Option number three, shift into a lower gear. Option number four, shift into a medium gear. The answer is option number three, shift into a lower gear. Note, when driving down a steep hill, you can shift your car into a low gear to help slow your vehicle. Never coast in neutral or for cars with a standard transmission. Never coast with your foot on the clutch. Question, if a broken yellow line is on your side of the center line? Option number one. You may not cross the line. Option number two, you may cross the line only if the other side has a broken yellow line. Option number three, you may cross the line to pass other vehicles. Option number four, none of the above apply. The answer is option number three, you may cross the line to pass other vehicles. Note, Keep to the right of the yellow center line. You may cross a broken line when passing another vehicle or when the right half of the road is closed. Do not cross the line if it is not safe 
or it is a solid yellow line. Question, at night you should dim your headlights to low beam whenever you are? Option number one, within 500 feet of an oncoming vehicle. Option number two, driving on a well-lit road. Option number three, within 300 feet of a vehicle you are following. Option number four, in all of the above situations. The answer is option number four, in all of the above situations. Note, slow down when driving at night, and be sure you can stop within the distance lit by your headlights. You must use your headlights, beginning 30 minutes after sunset and ending 30 minutes before sunrise, or any time when individuals or vehicles cannot be seen clearly for at least 1,000 feet. Avoid looking directly into the headlights of approaching vehicles. Shift your eyes down to the lower right side of your traffic lane. Use your low beam headlights when Number 1. Within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle. Number 2. Following closely, within 300 feet, behind another vehicle. Number 3. Driving on lighted roads. Number 4. Driving in fog, heavy rain, sleet, snow, or dust. If you must park on an unlighted highway at night, leave your parking lights or low beam headlights on. Question, in Texas you must use your headlights from one half hour after sunset until? Option number one, two hours before sunrise. Option number two, one hour before sunrise. Option number three, one half hour before sunrise. Option number four, one and a half hours before sunrise. The answer is option number three, one half hour before sunrise. Note, you must use your headlights beginning 30 minutes after sunset and ending 30 minutes before sunrise or any time when individuals or vehicles cannot be seen clearly for at least 1,000 feet. Question, if you are driving faster than the other traffic on a freeway, you should use? Option number one, the right lane. Option number two, the shoulder. Option number three, any lane. Option number four, the middle or left lane. The answer is option number four, the middle or left lane. Note, driving on the highway, choose the proper lane. Number one, Use the right lane to drive at the minimum posted speed limit or below the normal flow of traffic. Number two, use the middle or left lane if you are traveling faster than other traffic or passing other vehicles. Number three, if you plan to leave the freeway soon, change to the exit lane as soon as possible. Question, dash on your side of the road indicates a no-passing zone. Option number one, a solid yellow line. Option number two, a broken white line. Option number three, a broken yellow line. Option number four, none of the above. The answer is option number one, a solid yellow line. Note, a solid yellow line on your side of the road marks a no-passing zone. Broken or dashed lines permit you to pass or change lanes, if safe. Question, dash may be used in work zones in both day and night, to guide drivers into certain traffic lanes. Option number one, railroad crossing signals. Option number two, barricades. Option number three, flag persons. Option number four, large flashing or sequencing arrow panels. The answer is option number four, large flashing or sequencing arrow panels. Note, 
Flashing arrow panels. Large flashing or sequencing arrow panels may be used in work zones day and night to guide drivers into certain traffic lanes and to inform them part of the road ahead is closed. Question, the stopping distance of an average passenger car traveling at 55 miles per hour is approximately? Option number one, 164 feet. Option number two, 387 feet. Option number three, 240 feet. Option number four, 303 feet. The answer is option number three, 240 feet. Note, tractor trailers take longer to stop than a car traveling at the same speed. The average passenger car traveling at 55 miles per hour can stop in approximately 240 feet, which is about three-fourths the length of a football field. A fully loaded tractor trailer may take more than 400 feet to completely stop, well over the length of a football field. Question, what does this sign mean? Option number one, the road is closed ahead. Option number two, the rails of a narrow bridge are ahead. Option number three, a Y intersection is ahead. Option number four, a T intersection is ahead. The answer is option number four, a T intersection is ahead. Note, you are approaching a T intersection and must turn left or right. Be prepared to yield the right of way at the intersection if necessary. Question, when a vehicle's tires lose contact with the roadway and rise up on top of the water, the condition is called? Option number one, hydroplaning. Option number two, weaving. Option number three, tailgating. Option number four, tunnel vision. The answer is option number one, hydroplaning. Note, hydroplaning occurs when a tire patch loses contact with the road by rising up on top of water. Question, what does this sign mean? Option number one, a traffic signal ahead. Option number two, a closed road ahead. Option number three, a stop sign ahead. Option number four, a work zone ahead. The answer is option number three, a stop sign ahead. Be prepared for a stop sign ahead. Question, what does this sign mean? Option number one, there is a low place in the road ahead. Option number two, there is a bump in the road ahead. Option number three, there is a work zone ahead. Option number four, there is detour ahead. The answer is option number one, there is a low place in the road ahead. Note, there is a low place in the road. Slow down in order to avoid losing control of your vehicle or an uncomfortable jolt. Question, in which of the following situations should you not drive on the left side of the road? Option number one, when pavement markings prohibit it. Option number two, when there are two or more traffic lanes in each direction. Option number three, when you are within 100 feet of an intersection. Option number four, all of the above. The answer is option number four, all of the above. Note, never drive on the left side of the road when Number one, pavement markings or signs prohibit driving on the left, a no-passing zone or solid lane lines. Number two, there are two or more traffic lanes in each direction.
Number three, within 100 feet of, or crossing an intersection, or railroad crossing. Number four, on a hill, curve, or any other place where vision is limited. Number five, within 100 feet of a bridge, viaduct, or tunnel. Question, under Texas law, you must not park your vehicle? Option number one, on a sidewalk. Option number two, within an intersection. Option number three, in a crosswalk. Option number four, in any of the above locations. The answer is option number four, in any of the above locations. Note, in the following situations, you should not park, stop, or allow a vehicle to stand idling. Number one, on the roadside of any vehicle stopped or parked at the edge or curb of a street. Number two, on a sidewalk or crosswalk. Number three, within an intersection. Number four, between a safety zone and adjacent curb or within 30 feet of a place on the curb immediately opposite the end of a safety zone. Number five, alongside or opposite of any street excavation or obstruction when stopping, standing, or parking would obstruct traffic. Number six, on a bridge or other elevated structure on a highway or within a highway tunnel. Number seven, on any railroad track. Number 8. At any place where an official sign prohibits stopping. Question. In Texas, which occupants of a passenger vehicle must wear safety belts or appropriate child restraints? Option number 1. The drive, front seat passengers and rear seat passengers under 17. Option number 2. The driver and front seat passengers. Option number three, the driver and rear seat passengers. Option number four, the driver and all passengers. The answer is option number four, the driver and all passengers. Note, the driver and all passengers, regardless of age, in a passenger vehicle, are required to use safety belts if occupying a seat in a vehicle equipped with a safety belt. Any child under 8 years old must be secured in a federally approved child car seat if occupying a seat in a vehicle equipped with a safety belt, unless the child is more than 4 feet 9 inches tall. Question, areas of the road that you cannot see in your mirrors are called? Option number 1, special zones. Option number 2, blind spots. Option number three, blank spots. Option number four, invisible spots. The answer is option number two, blind spots. Note, blind spot and area rearview mirrors cannot show. When you are passing, do not drive or linger in the other driver's blind spot. Either pass the other driver or slow down so you are not in another driver's blind spot. It is likely the other driver cannot see you if you are in or near their blind spot. Question, what does this sign mean? Option number one, a one-way road ahead. Option number two, an underpass ahead. Option number three, a railroad crossing ahead. Option number four, a narrow bridge ahead. The answer is option number four, a narrow bridge ahead. Note, the bridge ahead is not as wide as the road. Slow down and use caution. Question in Texas, you must parallel park your vehicle within dash of the curb or edge of the roadway. Option number one, 10 inches. Option number two, 15 inches. Option number three, 18 inches. Option number four, 50 inches. 
The answer is option number 3, 18 inches. Note, the vehicle lines up parallel or going the same direction as the curb. When parallel parking, the vehicle must be 6 to 18 inches from the curb. Question, when you're driving on the highway, you can prevent highway hypnosis by Option number 1, taking stimulants. Option number 2, shifting your eyes frequently. Option number 3, talking on your cell phone. Option number 4, listening to loud music. The answer is option number 2, shifting your eyes frequently. Note, highway hypnosis, drowsy or trance-like condition caused by concentration on the road ahead and monotony of driving. A condition of drowsiness or unawareness can be brought on by reduced activity and steady sounds of wind, engine, and tire hum. This is known as highway hypnosis. All drivers should be aware of its danger and of the methods for fighting it. Number 1. Stop often. Even if you are feeling well, you should stop at least every 2 hours or every 100 miles. Get out of your car and walk around. Allow your muscles to relax. Number 1. Do not drive more than 8 hours per day. Number 1. Keep shifting your eyes. Look at different objects, near and far, left and right. Read the road signs as you approach them. Check your rearview mirror. Question, under Texas law, if you intend to turn, you must signal continuously for at least, dash, before you turn. Option number 1, 500 feet. Option number 2, 300 feet. Option number 3, 100 feet. Option number 4, 400 feet. The answer is option number 3, 100 feet. Note, signal continuously for at least 100 feet before turning or stopping, and be sure to turn off your signal lights once your turn is complete. Your unintended signal still means turn to other drivers. Question, at speeds over 30 miles per hour, you should maintain a following distance of at least, dash, behind the vehicle ahead of you. Option number 1, 6 seconds. Option number 2, 4 seconds. Option number 3, 5 seconds. Option number 4, 10 seconds. The answer is option number 2, 4 seconds. Note, for speeds under 30 miles per hour, the minimum time with good road conditions is 2 seconds. For speeds above 30 miles per hour, maintain 4 seconds, more for adverse conditions, of following time. Developing a 4 second following interval is the best practice for a beginning or less experienced driver. Question, when you approach a railroad crossing that a train is approaching, you must stop your vehicle, dash, from the nearest rail. Option number 1, between 5 and 40 feet. Option number 2, between 15 and 50 feet. Option number 3, between 15 and 30 feet. Option number 4, between 5 and 25 feet. The answer is option number 2, between 15 and 50 feet. Note, at railroad crossing stop within 15 feet to 50 feet of the nearest rail when. Number 1, you are directed to do so by a flag person. Number 2, there are flashing red lights or warning bells sounding. Number 3, there is any warning device telling you a train is coming. Question, what does this sign indicate? Option number one, a playground ahead. Option number two, a library ahead. Option number three, a pedestrian ahead. 
Option number four, a school zone ahead. The answer is option number four, a school zone ahead. Note, you are near a school. Slow down, watch for children, and prepare to stop suddenly if necessary. Question, if you see a flag person on the road, it means that? Option number one, you must take a detour. Option number two, you must go straight. Option number three, you must increase your speed. Option number four, you must obey the flag person's signal. The answer is option number four, you must obey the flag person's signal. Note, a flag person is often provided in roadway work zones to stop, slow, or guide traffic safely through the area. A flag person wears an orange vest, shirt, or jacket and uses stop or slow paddles or red flags to direct traffic through work zones. Number 1. A flag person is used in cases of extreme hazard. Number 2. A flag person's instructions must be obeyed. Number 3. When instructed to stop, do so in your lane and do not veer right or left. Number 4. Do not attempt to go forward until the flag person instructs you to do so. Number 5. Proceed with caution, expect the unexpected. Number 6. Always be on the lookout for oncoming vehicles in your lane of traffic. Question. To enter a freeway smoothly, enter an acceleration lane and dash to match the speed of highway traffic. Option number one, change lanes and increase your speed. Option number two, increase your speed. Option number three, slowly reduce your speed. Option number four, suddenly decrease your speed. The answer is option number two, increase your speed. Note, entering the highway. Number one, you must yield the right-of-way to vehicles already on the highway. Number 2. Enter the speed change lane, stay to the right, signal left, and when it is clear, increase your speed to merge with the flow of traffic. Question. What is the correct hand and arm signal to indicate a left turn? Option number 1. Left hand and arm up, keeping hand and arm still. Option number two, left hand and straight out, keeping hand and arm still. Option number three, left hand and arm down, keeping hand and arm still. Option number four, right hand and arm up, keeping hand and arm still. The answer is option number two, left hand and straight out, keeping hand and arm still. Note, signal continuously for at least 100 feet before turning or stopping, and be sure to turn off your signal lights once your turn is complete. Your unintended signal still means, turn, to other drivers. Question, which of the following can be considered a legal parking zone? Option number one, a crosswalk or sidewalk. Option number two, the curb or edge of a public road. Option number three, within 30 feet of a stop sign, yield sign, or traffic signal. Option number four, a bridge or tunnel. The answer is option number two, the curb or edge of a public road. Note, the curb or edge of a public roadway can be considered a legal parking zone. When you parallel park on a public road, you must park within 18 inches of the curb or edge of the roadway, facing in the same direction as traffic on your side of the road.